Today, guys, we're getting ready to do a van tour. I'm going to be meeting up with a gentleman by the name of James. James is residing in his van. Mr. James is going to give us an inside look at van life and show us what his day to day is. So without further ado, we're going to jump on this in this vlog, get this thing started. I see my man over here with his gas cap. Yo, you got a gas? In there. Can you make it to the gas station right here? Come on, follow me. I got you. That's not the gentleman that I'm interviewing today. But I'm going to stop at the gas station first make sure that the homie's straight, man. Trying times out here. What's happening, man? All right. I need to get some gas. What is my man on right there? Um, the Yeah. Six. Let me get him a, a dub. How much cash back can I get from you? Uh, up to 40. Let me go over there to the ATM. Let me explain. He shut my disability off after 15 years, right? and, and it, it, it didn't give me no warning. Right. I went and took care of matters I have to take care of. I, it, it got to be flat. Right. That ain't a Pennsylvania driver's license, is it? Nah. <laughs> I just love that one. Hey, uh, I just put this, I just put you a dub on there. Thank you, sir. All right. I was going to hit the homie off with some cash, too, but the homie dipped on me. The homie got his gas, and he was out this bit. So, oh, well, let's go ahead and get our vlog started. Oh, man. No, so she's used to being filmed. I used to have a YouTube channel before. I had, like, 340 subscribers, but I ended up deleting it. James, nice to meet you. I put some of the videos on Rumble. But nice I hate you, YouTube. Man. I could go on like a five hour diatribe as to why. I honestly believe that social media is government. I don't think these phones came out of nowhere. I don't think it's an organic accident. It's like uh -huh. maple syrup. You know what I mean? If you follow human history, it's pretty much like horse and carriage for a long, long time kind of shit. And then we had a radio and television and TV. And then we got these phones. And look how man has changed. Everywhere in the world, Bangladesh, Slumdog Millionaire, 8 Mile, don't matter. I mean, if you got a pulse, you got a cell phone. If you ain't got no money, you can have one anyways. Get you online, 5G. Why? So you can play games? So you can order free food and not produce anything? Why? What is this all about? And then look at mankind. Look at mankind, how it's changed. Look how people have changed. Look how people, how they interact have changed. We're both old enough to remember a different world. Yeah. Have you seen the kids? I got nieces and nephews. Uh, yeah. I mean, they're growing up with iPads in their hand. It's yeah. totally different than building a fort yeah, and getting lost in the woods. Bruh. Breaking into people's houses, stealing shit from the party store. You know, <laughs> it, as criminal as that is, it's real life. Right. You know what I mean? So, James. Yeah, yeah. I thought that we were going to be over here in like an like RV park or something like that. So here's the thing. I'm like antisocial as fuck. So you notice like I'm homeless, but I like hang out where there's no other homeless people in a nice neighborhood. Like, I don't... I don't even like to go like once I start going a couple miles south and you start getting into the junkies on the streets, it just turns me off. I'm like a super sensitive dude, you know what I mean? Hence the snowbirding and the just kind of a snowflake personality. I can't I can't really deal with it. You know what I mean? So I tell so I actually have friends that live in these houses and shit. They come over and feed me and shit and, and talk to me. And I always tell them like I identify as a millionaire, you know what I mean? <laughs> I just ain't got the money to live in the neighborhood officially. And I, and I hung out here all last year and then had the cops called on me a couple times and making friends with the cops. They were like agreeing with me that people are just Karens with nothing better to do. I had like over Christmas people bring me food. They bring me food and shit. You know, I sit here, I play my guitar, I smoke weed. You right out of the, uh, right outside of a gated community. Yeah, basically. Right. <laughs> This would not fly <laughs> nine and a half times out of ten. Hey, why not pick the, a great neighborhood? Why not? I think this shit's funny because people think, well, he doesn't have any money, so he's just fall in line and go hang out in the zone and smoke dope off of tinfoil all day long. It's like, no. I don't like fentanyl. I don't like wide open borders. I don't like seeing my society being fucking destroyed. I don't like seeing people taking their own lives. And when you're crawling down the street looking for your next pill, to me, that's like slow suicide. Because yeah. weed still ain't killed nobody. <laughs> cost me a few jobs, a few relationships, but did it cost me that or did I trade it? You know what I mean? Yeah. But yeah, so this is my whip. So this, this is my $900 van that I bought four years ago. Um, February 1st, be four years old. It's Where are you from? Where are you from? So I'm from Michigan originally. Okay. So I moved I moved out to Washington to smoke weed in 2014. Did you? Yeah, to live out so I could smoke weed and be left the fuck alone. What a concept. You always liked uh you always liked marijuana? 
Uh, you know what's funny is I didn't become a pothead until I was 29. I'm 41 now. So I didn't I didn't do drugs for the most part. Never really was a heavy drinker. But yeah. Uh, I fucking uh No, I'm definitely an anomaly. I don't make any sense. Anybody that knows me, like, you don't fit into any group or box. Like just when you think you got me boxed in, they're like, he's just a dude. He just does his own thing. He's that guy. But yeah, so this is my humble abode. I converted it. It's got a bed in the back. It's pretty disgusting. It's the last car in the world that anybody would ever think about breaking into. So that's a feature that not everybody has. Was that part of your plan? I don't give a shit. Can I be honest with you? you know, yeah. I, I just... Please. But the longer I live life, the less I give a fuck, but in a good way. Like, not worrying about shit. Like, I don't care. And that, what happens is, is like, when you have a piece of shit car and you're, like, begging for gas, people are like, sure, I'll fill you up. There's no rebuttal. This guy's clearly destitute. <laughs> he, he doesn't give a fuck. You know what I mean? Like, but I was out there in like a brand new Porsche bagger for gas. People like, come on, man. So it's like it fits. The dog fits. You know what I mean? It's just like I found her in a parking lot five years ago. She looked like she got some wolf, man, from those. That's guys. what everybody says. So I got her DNA tested. She's a uh, 62 percent husky. She's uh, an eighth Malamute and an eighth German Shepherd. And then the rest, like you pick them. But she's the most friendly, lovable dog. Like I said, we had a YouTube channel, but I got off YouTube because I hate YouTube. The way they shadow ban you. The way, it, here's the name of the game. When you work at a company and you have a job, if you're a job person, you have to watch what you say and do, or else. And then there's people like Mark Cuban, who say and do whatever the fuck they want. And they build businesses and they make shit loads of money and they're just their own, and you know what I mean? And like Dana White says and does what the fuck he wants. He ain't worried about getting fired. He ain't worried about getting canceled and sponsors don't want to give him money. He's still fucking rich. To me, that's the American dream because that's liberty realized. Is he hurting anybody? No. The guy has a fighting competition. Those guys want to fight. These guys want to pay to see it. They want to drink the beer. These guys want to sell it. They're all adults. Uh, you know what I mean? That's fair, a good American. Fair exchange. Yeah, he ain't starting no shit. He ain't destroying other people's shit. He's staying in his lane and doing his own thing. So to me, that's like, that's who I strive to be. Well, I don't got Dana White's money. Well, you don't need money to not give a fuck and just be your own dude, you know, and say your own thing. So on YouTube, it's, it's, uh, I don't know if you're familiar with Kwame Brown. He's a yeah. former NBA. He, he's really coining the go-along, get-along game. He didn't coin it, but he's really, he says that a lot. That's what YouTube is now. It's, it's the Main Street go-along, get-along game. And if you got a candy store on Main Street and you put up a Trump flag in your fucking front window, they're going to shadow ban you so people don't come in your candy store and buy fucking shit. Fuck you. I don't want to do business here because that's not fair game. Right. Because they can put up their pride flag. And I'm not telling somebody they got to rip that down. That's what makes America great. You want to put up a white flag, a pride flag, a fucking unicorn fucking flag, an American flag, a Ukrainian flag? Flag yourself the flag out. I don't give a flag. You know what I mean? Right, right. It's a fucking, it's your property. If you want to burn an American flag, light it up. Right. And if you're offended by that, I think you're fucking retarded. Because, because what makes a great country a great country is great people, great countrymen. And a diverse great countryman would only stand a reason to be better. You know, and if you've ever been to San Francisco or Seattle and tasted the food, you like diversity. So yeah. for me, I don't know. I could just fucking go on, man. Are you a Carrie Lake? No, I don't vote, but she won. Okay. <laughs> All right. Like, how do you know she won? Well, after they stole the election from her, I came down here and I stood out on the corner over by Walmart with a sign that says, Honk if you voted for Katie Hobbs. It was quiet. Every now and again, you get a honk. Most people, no, 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 no. Put up another sign. Honk if you voted for Carrie Lake. Three to one. Some days four to one. After two or three days of doing that, it's all the anecdotal evidence I need. Um, I don't believe our elections are sound. If you've ever seen the movie Free State of Jones, where they let blacks vote in Mississippi for the first time, and the dude's got the fucking nuts to go in there and vote in the first place, and they fucking rip his vote up, I don't think anything's changed since Jones County. Nothing's changed. People with power set the rules of society for the masses. That is par for the fucking course. Whether it's Henry VIII, Donald Trump, Ronald Reagan, George Washington, me, it, it, there's no difference. It's people with money set the fucking table and that's what history has shown. They manipulate the masses, they have the ways they like to do it, but government means mind control. Hey, we got a wide open border, our dollar's being destroyed, our economy sucks. There's people dying on the street of fentanyl. And the opposing candidate, Katie Hobbs, sits in her basement and never even mentions it. 
If you were in a relationship and you and your wife were having problems and you never wanted to talk about it and never ever wanted to even bring it up, your ass would be fucking divorced. If she's a good woman. So this country should fucking divorce with the government in all forms, which I do in terms of sovereign citizenship. My license, not legit, um, because I don't pay. My plates, my insurance, all that shit. I've been driving around the country for a couple of years this way. I've been pulled over 12 times, been let go 12 times. But if you go on the internet, if you call up the police station, they say you get your car hooked up and you get it pounded. But they just let me go. So how and why is that? I made friends with a cop, which that don't happen every day. But at the end of the conversation, I said, but it says no parking. He goes, you're fine, brother. And then this year, a different cop who I hadn't seen since two years ago, he rolled up on me because they were over here looking for somebody. And he's like, I think I remember you. Checks my shit, sees that it's all like the expired. He's like, hey, I'm not in the business of writing tickets. You're good, brother. Have a nice day. <laughs> right, right. Real. Right, right. Like our borders wide open. Our currency's fucking collapsing. Like, how many times has the shit at the grocery store got to double before start people start subscribing to this idea? Like, when my mom went to the store with a dollar when she was a kid, she got a candy bar, a bag of chips, a fucking pop, a pack of smokes <laughs> for $2. How <laughs> oh, you ain't getting shit? <laughs> so, and that's part of it. So, I know I don't vote, but Carrie Lake, so she pointed out that our kids are dying from fentanyl, and Katie Hobbs says that she wants men to be able to be married, and uh, she thinks that uh, if you want to kill your baby, that's cool, and that's her platform. And she sits in her fucking basement, okay? I'm pretty sure the majority of people don't like the fentanyl. I'm pretty sure the majority of the people see our fucking country being destroyed before their very eyes. And when one person's saying, hey, we got a problem here. You know what I mean? We got a leak under the fucking kitchen sink and it's flooding and we have mold, baby. We got to get this shit out of here. And if your response is, it ain't happening, you're the fucking asshole. You're the fucking asshole. Carrie Lakes, so that's how I know she won, because most people are fucking sane, and the majority of people are moral as fuck, because they're poor. They have to be. That's another thing. So, this is how I get gas. This is how I travel the country. Anybody who says they can't leave the hood. So, if you're, like, sitting in Chirac right now, and you don't want and you want to disassociate, get yourself a Sharpie and a cardboard, and make sure you put this thing right here, this God, and really emphasize the God bless part. I think that's really important. It resonates with people. You'd be surprised. <laughs> Hold on one second, James. What? So the sign, I travel the all sign, over the country with this, bro. The sign without the God, it works, but is, just works better. Uh, is different than when you throw than when in. you say God bless. For example, if I don't have this God bless, the lady up in Prescott that filled me up a couple weeks ago, or maybe a couple months ago when I was up there, she came up to me. She goes, I just want to know that you're saved and that I love you and God loves you. And she was very warm and very sweet, petting my dog. I think she gave me twenty bucks or something, but. To me, that's better than here you go. You know what I mean? So, you know, you connect with people. So is there an afterlife? I don't know. Is there a guy in a cloud? I don't know. Am I gonna see my dead friends again? I don't know. But what I do know is that when you subscribe to the idea of being a better person, that resonates with people. Because I think that's what we all go through in the mirror every day, is how can I be a better person? I know I'm not ever gonna be perfect and somehow trying to reap the benefits of being a better person. You have a uh, bed frame and everything. Yeah, so this is a full twin bed that I got on Craigslist for free. My, This is disgusting. Like I said, normally I have all this shit in the front seat, but I didn't know if you were going to be hopping in, so I put a bunch of stuff back here. We got tools, dog food, you know. I got a solar panel that I charge my power box with, and my most prized possession is my dog, and then second's my guitar. And, uh, yeah, all the uh, weed stores across the country for fun <laughs> I think it's cool I've bought in about 12 different states you know somebody with a memory this is not the best pizza in Bozeman but it's a cool sticker and I moved out west in 14 I've been traveling since 11 so Michigan it's... legal now oh Michigan's been legal Oh yeah, it's dude. Half the country's fucking legal. They'll throw states up, and I didn't even know it. When I was driving through New, Me New Mexico last year, going back to Michigan to visit my mom, I didn't even know it was legal. I started to drink a beer. I was all sad and shit that I couldn't get weed, and I don't know what spurned it. And I just I, that's what it. I saw some girl at the counter at Love's with a pre roller. <laughs> dude, I'm a junkie. I like my reefer, and I fucking went online. I'm like, are you fucking kidding me? And I was like one exit away from a pot shop. I was so elated. So New Mexico. Now I'll drive slower through New Mexico. I'll spend more money. I'll appreciate the roses more. Mm -hmm. 
Because I don't give a fuck to the tenth power. So this, yeah, this is crazy. Got stories with all this. This busted ass window. Nine hundred dollars for this fucking van. Like I said, I've driven it. I put a, almost a hundred thousand miles on it. <clears throat> I put tires on it, brakes, oil, a starter. How long you been doing this lifestyle? Since eleven. So I used to go to Florida. So I'm from Michigan, and that's and I did the stereotypical fuck this shit. I'm going to Florida for the winter, and that started two thousand eleven. And then I moved around, and like I said, I moved out west and stuff like that, and I was stationary for a little bit. But I've been back in my car since 17, so seven years. What pissed you off? Were you always too like many a, things, too were you many a renegade things. as a kid? You got it, bro. I had a chip on my shoulder as a young kid. It started out with just a stereotypical kid. You know how kids are, smart kids, kids that are outside of the box. They don't fit in the second grade, sitting in a chair learning shit again that they learned in the first grade. But the teacher doesn't know that I remember what you showed me last year. So why the fuck am I here? Oh, it's public babysitting. I can't leave. So you start out life incarcerated in a weird way. And anybody knows anything about the United States, we love incarceration. Land of the free, home of the most prisoners. A lot of money in it. A lot of money in it. And come to find out you can really manipulate people. What better notion than to trick somebody into thinking they're the freest people in the world when they're not? How fucking clever and maniacal is that? That's what I think the United States is. George Carlin got to me at a young age. Said the American dream is a dream. You got to be asleep to believe it. So I just, I just was just bucking authority, making me go to school and then getting into it with principals, getting sent away to a youth home for two weeks. Nothing crazy, but little shit like that. When you're, when you're in cuffs driving to a youth home when you're 12 years old, because you didn't want to be in a public indoctrination center that's going to cause you to be a good little cog in a wheel to take all your government shots. You're somehow the bad guy. So just like right out the gate. So it's like in that I rejected it and I did things that I shouldn't have done. Maybe like, if you know what I mean? I sat and did things that were hurtful and harmful to people, but ultimately I don't want to be here. And I went, started to go down the path of like, oh, build well, have a nice apartment, have a new car, all that shit. And it never really stuck. Never wanted to go to college, never had a use for it. Never really had a trade. Like I have a passion of guitar. I play guitar for 20 years now because I like to. And that's what I enjoy doing. And I like smoking weed and I like hanging out with my dog. And I like sitting in silence. And the longer you sit in silence, the easier and better it gets. And the harder it becomes to be around people. Just in general, COVID was a wrap. COVID did it for me in terms of checking out of society. Like I'm trying to get a job, actually I got a guy supposed to call me now, uh, soon this morning for a dishwashing job. So I have a little bit of money in my pocket. She needs to go to the vet. She actually has a vet appointment on the 5th and I'm short the money. So I get this job, I'll have the money and she go to the vet and then I can get back to not fucking worrying about that shit. Then you going back. <laughs> I got the gift of perfect health and you ain't gonna catch me beating my body down. I'm not that dude. I'm just not. I'm just not. And you can call me what you want. You can say what you want. But I think I'm pr doing pretty good in my percentile in terms of my health, in terms of my, my blood prescription, my blood panel, you know what I mean? Like, I don't go to big pharma. I don't go to doctors. I don't go to hospitals. I don't take shots. I don't take vaccines, none of that shit. So, and I still haven't gotten sick. I ain't wearing no fucking mask. To be honest with you, I don't think there was a virus. People get sick, undeniable. The, the, the conversation, I highly encourage you, man, I'm not forcing ideas down your throat because this is something that is, is relatively new to me, is terrain theory and understanding the, the, the shit's in our body, man. The toxins, they're chemtrailing, the food in the fucking water is full of fucking poison. Here, have a cigarette, have a beer, have a joint, have a pill, have a this, have a that. They're getting you at 90 different fucking angles. And anybody who's ever got on a good diet, started going to gym, cleaning their body out, sweat, the, you fucking, you'd be like, oh man. You know what I mean? Or if you're a drinker and you just stop drinking for a minute or you eat too much junk food and you rein it in, you start feeling better. So much goes. So it's not to say that pathogens aren't real, but to me, in my opinion, in this school of thought, I think it's both. I think pathogens are real. And I think perhaps that your immune system can be compromised to the point of them having relevance. But if you're out there doing what you should do, capitalizing on good genetics, if you got it or whatever, you ain't worried about shit. You just ain't. It's no mystery, bro. Like you can look at all the people in my family that have like been in and out of the hospital, in and out of the doctors, you know people that take that. When you have that relationship with these, these are the motherfuckers that are sick. It's the people that are never there that won't deal with them that don't get sick. These old people that just like live their whole life to 90 and they're smoking and drinking, you know what I mean? Like they used to be. There used to be old dudes that lived in their 80s smoking and drinking. 
And now you got kids with cancer, kids having fucking heart attacks. Motherfucker, we're tough is what I'm getting at. We're resilient, tough motherfuckers. And the idea that this tiny little pathogen is the complete undoing of me, I don't buy because there's so much that goes into your body operating at optimal levels that when the shit ain't there, when you ain't absorbing nutrients, when you ain't getting them, when your T cell count isn't there and all this stuff that adds up, you could be compromised. What's your daily? So it's, it's cold right now. It's, it's freezing, yeah. bro. Um, rainy today. Yeah, this a little is to bit. me. I wouldn't want it. I'm from Michigan, so for me, two weeks of this in Phoenix is like, eh, whatever. Yeah, it's the one thing that breaks on Toyotas, the fucking door handles. Oh, uh, both of them broke. Huh? Oh, they all break all around. That's what breaks on them. It's like a running joke. To me, the late '90s Toyotas are the best ones. Three hundred and twenty-four thousand miles transmission still shifts like butter the four-speed automatic sometimes i'll be like driving and i'll like be pounding it or i'll be like have it high and it's in it dropped the gear and then it's going to go back to overdrive so like in those tense months it'll just be like i'm like it cracks me up it's like brand new and then there's people with like 2012s and 16s with their eight speeds and they're in the transmission shop because their car won't work uh. and i got this piece of fucking shit that i paid 900 dollars for they've been driving for four fucking years i drove it across the country a dozen fucking times and the, the running thing with me is nobody spends less on cars than me. If you're spending less on cars than me, I'm pissed. <laughs> if you're getting around for less than me, I'm pissed. Because hey. I want to get around for less than anyone to prove you don't need all the shit that people think they need. They just want it, you know? Is the universe providing? It, yeah. I, honestly, bro, dude, I'm telling you, I was like, I went atheist for most of my life. And like, I'm not really like into, into theology still. Like I got Bibles, I don't read them, I can't read them. And a lot of shit in there I think is fucking retarded. I'd be lying if I didn't say that. But the notion that a dude died for your sins, the notion that you have unconditional love, all that stuff, it's great, but I, that's not me, I don't really need that. You know what I mean? I'm not like, oh, I didn't get the love I needed. No, I, had a, I got plenty of love. I need to be left the fuck alone. That's been my gripe my whole life. So like this spy right here is genius because I get left alone. I go pull into Toledo with this van and these plates. I'll see five cops in two days. Ask me how I know. Right. So everywhere I go, I'm getting the cops called on me. So when I go somewhere and I don't get the cops called on me, or if I do and the cops don't mind me and the people like me, that's where I'm hanging out. How long have you been right here at this location? Uh, this is my second year coming down here. This is my third winter in Phoenix. My first, my first one was on the other side of 17. There was a lot that's now they've built there, but it used to be vacant. Me and my brother were hanging out there. So because of that, last year I discovered this spot. So this is my second year hanging out over here, but I don't sleep here. I sleep at like Safeway and I have other spots that I go, I, I move around. I hang out here. I don't fucking grow roots here. I don't leave garbage. I don't have encampments. I don't have strange people pushing shopping carts full of fucking garbage looking for fentanyl pills rolling around. Okay. And when they come over here and they look at me, I, I give them get the fuck away from me vibes. Get the fuck away from me, you fucking street zombie. I know you're one of God's children and it's a good damn thing he loves you because I fucking don't, right? If it was bestowed upon me to love like everybody, it, that's what it would be, but it ain't. Right? If your friends liked everybody, them liking you wouldn't mean shit. That's what I'm getting at. Man, it oh, is the, cold, bro. Oh, it's fucking ridiculous. When I start complaining about how cold it is, that says something. Cause Can we let this one up, too? Yep. You got heat in there? In oh, here? Yeah. No way to see but heat. It's going to take a second to get rolling with heat. I don't have, in, I don't have fucking Lincoln Navigator heat. I think I got a box to put you in, bro. A box? Yeah. I got a category to put you oh, in. Oh, man. I don't know, man. That, cause see, that's slightly offensive. Not <laughs> in a nice way, because my right. favorite compliment of all time was my brother. He goes, he, he's the one that said it. He goes, you don't have a box. He's like, I give up. Are right, you ready? All right, what's the box? Uh, conspiracy theories. Oh, come on now. Some Somebody who speculates over the plans of others. Let's just use cinnamons here. Or synonyms, not cinna cinnamons. So conspiracy theorists was a term coined by the CIA to discredit people asking questions about them killing our fucking president in front of us in 1963. Um, so, you know what I mean? Well, how about Bobby Kennedy? How about Bobby Kennedy saying Sirhan Sirhan didn't kill his dad? 
right? Is it safe to say that maybe the same people that shot RFK in the head in 1968 also shot John F. Kennedy in the head in 1963? Well, RFK Jr. says Sirhan Sirhan did not kill his dad. He was used to convince people that's who killed his dad, to make it out to be a patsy, that this is one off-road crazy weird dude killed his dad. The people who tried to kill Reagan, also government. Anybody who's ever tried to actually be president in this country and do things that are counter towards what the globalist and the corporatists want to do, it's squash. And Trump's a perfect example. Like I said, didn't vote for the guy because I don't vote because I don't believe your vote counts and I keep getting vindicated every fucking two years. So James, what up? van life. We got two things that jump off with van life. Sure. We got a uh, 20 year old hippie girl super hot doing yoga outside of her van we've all seen those channels <laughs> right doing yoga outside of her van you know loving life smoking out all day yep. traveling the world typing on her macbook typing on her Mac Moab with her star lake with her two hundred thousand dollar sprinter but she's technically homeless I mean, that's why i love about it all it's like dude just fucking embrace it and Okay, Anyways, go ahead. So we got that, and I'm I'm just gonna you know listen. I'm just gonna say your it's a little less glamorous in here. A little less than, glamorous than, than that, and then you have just the uh, <laughs> you just straight decide you one day. I'm checking out words. of society. Yes, my mom when she used to have her job, she used to tell us she's like my sons are homeless by choice. Two of her sons, my brother does the same. Thing. Well, I heard you say that you your brother hung, hanging out with you. Yeah, he, we're fighting right now. We don't get along. Um, he's, um, you know, he's not the healthiest right now, but he's in court site right now, but we'll be back. It's, we've been, it's, you know how it is. He got a van too? Uh, he got a Volvo. It's hilarious. I bust his nuts about it. It looks nice. It's a newer car. Come to find out, he also doesn't even have much more room than my damn Camry, but he converted it and he's got his bed in there and his blah, 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 set up. But no, he wants a Sienna because he sees the genius in these cheap old Toyotas and they fucking go forever and they're easy to work on and parts are everywhere. And, I mean, it's just the car before this Camry in '97 that I paid 325 bucks for, two and a half years running when I got rid of it. Car before that was a '90 something Corolla, 400 bucks. Drove that for two and a half years all over the country. That was running on like two cylinders, but running when I got rid of that one. It's like when you pay so little for a car and you drive it for a few years, you're so in the fucking green. And if you were like a smart man or you know a hard working man and you were making all sorts of money, you could be saving that. And you could be that dude that's got this car, more money in the bank than anybody. Yeah. Or you'd be broke like me, but you. But if you did this and actually cashed your money, like, fuck, I ain't getting a new car, I ain't buying a new pair of shoes, I ain't fucking spending on nothing I ain't got to get, you could have shitloads of money. And I knew people like that, you know, grow up or frugal and shit. But that's what I do when I need some money. I get a job, get some money. Do you know what I need? And then I just go right back to living the bum life. A lot of people have fantasized about the bum life. I, I've uh, been told a lot of times that I'm jealous of you by family members and friends. Uh, things that are the most beneficial to you as a human being, mm -hmm. it's been drilled into us, programmed into us. Society has agreed to ostracize you because of it. You know, you're not supposed to live in a van, but guess what you're doing? Bro, you're not working. You don't have no bills. Pay three dollar a month gym membership because I do shower and brush my teeth and I like my teeth. Which is one of the reason I don't smoke meth, you know? When I decided to live in my van, my buddy showed me how to do it. Or my car, I should say. This is like 13 years ago. I'm like, I can never do that, I can never do that, I can never do that. Which is normal, what normal people say. I went to Florida in a fuck it, you know, attitude in the middle of the night, didn't tell anybody. And I didn't sleep for like three days almost. It was like I got very little sleep because I could not pass out of my car. I was so I had such an anxiety attack. And the first couple of nights it was like it was rough. But the first night to fall asleep in my car was almost impossible. But at a certain point, what happens is an old saying goes: the fever breaks when it's too much to take. And and there's something to be said for that. The way you're molded through adversity, and through that adversity. A week later, I was, the first night I was like, I told my buddy, I'm like, Todd, you're out of your fucking mind. You can't, how the fuck anybody do this? A week later, I'm like, dude, you're genius. Outside of your comfort zone might be something you want, but you gotta go outside of your comfort zone to get it. I, I don't want to be the person that sounds like, oh, you're just sitting back blaming, but the world is fucked. People are fucked. The way our society is arranged and structured in a lot of ways is fucked. There's a lot of dumb motherfuckers in positions of power 
making shitloads of money. There's a lot of brilliant motherfuckers with all the all the morals in the world that can't get a fucking well. You, well, you 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 like Trump, so you know what I mean. Why do I like Trump? Uh, cause he was legally elected by the American people. I, of course, nobody criticized Trump more than anybody. Everybody I knew, for the most part, are Republicans, and they I took heat for it. They're like, Whoa! like he's a fucking jackass. Like he's a pompous fucking asshole. Not the worst thing in the world. I know a few things about it. Being a jackass, being pompous, being bombastic and narcissistic and arrogant and conceited, and all these things that I rub off on people in certain ways. I get that. But I don't fuck kids. I don't poison the well. I don't traffic human beings. I don't steal your 401k through inflation. I don't send your kids off to fucking die in Ukraine. I don't, you know what I mean? Like there's worse things than pompous jackasses. And Ashley Biden wrote in her diary about taking uncomfortable showers with her dad. And then when that was reported, the mainstream news said it was fake and it wasn't real. And then the dude who released the information got his apartment raided by the FBI. Well, I thought you said it wasn't fucking real. Can't you guys get on the same team? Because the news says it's Russian disinfo, but the FBI is kicking this dude's door and saying, where'd you get the diary? Come to find out it was real, just like Hunter Biden's laptop. And apparently she was in rehab in Florida and she left her diary at a, at a halfway house. It sold it to some dude. Some dude that worked there sold it to James O'Keefe for forty grand. Very believable. That's exactly how it would go. Um, was what they did maybe illegal? Yeah. Guess what's worse? Fucking your own daughter for two hundred, Alex. I'll say in pedophilia, destroying the world for four hundred. So, and when you have relatives and your sister was molested and you see how much of a fucking basket case she is and then you fucking meet women that aren't as fucked up, you know, you see that there's a degree here of damage that people take. And, uh, yeah, so Biden's a fucking pedophile and Hunter Biden's a fucking pedophile. There's fucking emails, there's documentation, there's massive amounts of fucking evidence. So when you will talk about what kicks you out of society, when you realize that the fucking fake ass president who can't string two sentences together, who shits his pants, fucked his own daughter, and we all know about it, claiming he got 81 million votes, you got more than Obama? Obama won legally, brother. I'm from Detroit. I saw the signs. I'm on the streets. I talk to people. I can put it all together. Obama was legal elected twice okay Biden was not legally elected he lost in fucking counties that Hillary won how the fuck did you get more votes than Obama but yet you couldn't even win this county and get as many as Hillary got nobody liked Hillary shit just didn't add up districts with 105 percent how do you get 105 percent only 100 percent of the people can vote where's this other five percent